Yeah, like anybody else, Tom will use whatever tools are available to get the job done. It's not creative native anymore. It's not creative native anymore? Ingenuity. Ingenuity. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. It's Field Trip Friday, which means we're going on a field trip. We're over here at Tom's tent. He is a local native carver here on Vancouver Island in Victoria. And this is his little workshop that he's got set up where he carves totem poles and all sorts of other awesome, beautiful native artwork. So we're gonna do a little tour. I'll show you around. We got some big logs and chunks of wood just laying around here. And we'll take a closer look at some of his tools. And the whole point of this video is to actually show you the first beginning process steps of carving a totem pole. So he's got a couple poles roughed out in here, um, which he roughs out with a chainsaw. He's just be at beginning the design stages of carving a totem pole. And so we're gonna check in from time to time do some time lapses and watch the whole process of a totem pole being carved from just its rough log form all the way through to the finished product. So I'm super pumped on this video series. But without further ado, let's go in, meet Tom, and check out some of his work. Alright, so if we pan over here, we can see he's got a pretty much about a 40 foot long log there that he's going to be carving a really large totem pole out of, as well as another beauty here. He's got blankets on it here to keep the, the sun off of that so it doesn't check too crazy, but that's a beautiful old growth log there as well. It's kind of a woodworker's heaven here. It's gorgeous pieces of wood everywhere you look. Free of heart, cedar, that's quite a chunk there. All right, here is a log that has just been cleaned up with a chainsaw taking all the live edge off of it. This is what it looks like when it comes to the shop, just straight out of the bush. Here's another piece that uh, is gonna be, this one's going inside, Tom, is that right? Yeah. This is an interior pole, so you can see that Tom cuts the back off of it and then hogs out the heartwood with a chainsaw and that allows the growth rings to contract without splitting as much. So the drying process goes a lot uh, smoother, it doesn't tear the log apart because when you put a log that much moisture inside, it'll just explode if it doesn't dry real slow. But So this is probably one of the pieces that we're going to watch Tom carve, do some time lapses see the whole thing go from start to finish. Pretty pumped on that. Say hello, Tom. Hello, Tom. <laughs> this is Tom, he's been carving for 45 years. Yeah. Going on 46 years as a carver here in Vancouver Island. You can see some of his uh, tools here. Another cool thing we're gonna do is do a little series on making your own carving tools. So being the creative native that he is, uh, Tom and his brother Perry, they basically make all their tools. Most native carvers do here on the island. So you just take a chunk of cedar, an old file or saw blade, soften up the steel, then they shape it to all the different shapes that they want for whatever purpose they need because oftentimes when you're carving a totem pole, uh, you constantly need different profile chisels here. You can see this is this little sharpening station here. Got a couple Tormac grinders, leather strops, whatever gets the job done. Oil stones. These are a couple of old hand saws, Swede saws that he uses to cut up into smaller pieces and he makes his blades out of that. As well as you can see a bunch of old file stock here as well. Wherever you can get the good steel for cheap, you just use what you got. So here's a cool little piece that Tom's just carved up. This is a conductor's baton. He's making for a, a local conductor here in Victoria. Yeah. Retiring. Who's just retiring. So he's carved up this cool piece, kind of in a native style. And then he's making a yellow cedar case for it out of this piece of yellow cedar. So he'll cut that, he'll what, slice that in the middle and hinge it or what? No, I'm gonna put a top on it. Oh, so yeah, he's gonna hog out this center section right here carve that center bit and then he'll make a top for it as well. Carve some cool designs in there. 
That'll be interesting to see that piece finished as well. And what's this mask we got going on here? Owl mask. I'm working on it. I'm going to take the saw to it pretty soon and hollow it out. So he's kind of roughed out the back, you can see there, and he's going to take the chainsaw to it, just carve it out a little bit more. Is that just for just to save you time, obviously? Decent thickness all the way through, and I can do that with a saw a lot faster. I can do it by hand. Yeah. And you find that that just stabilizes the wood more, like, or is it more just aesthetics looks? It's lighter. Yeah. And like easier to hang up. And people like to hang them on the wall, so less wood. It's lighter. It could be wearable if I open the eyes up. And take a look at that. What you got going so far? As you can see here. Get a little focus here. So this is an owl. So all of this work is done, well, saves himself a lot of time by doing a majority of the work with a chainsaw because obviously taking a log down to a, a finished totem pole takes a considerable amount of time and there's just an insane amount of wood that has to be taken away. So doing that by hand, well, at one point that was the way it was done, but like any like anybody else <laughs> yeah like anybody else tom will use whatever tools are available to get the job done it's not creative native anymore it's not creative native anymore ingenuity ingenuity <laughs> that's a good pun <laughs> oh man that's a good one so let's take a look at some of these carving tools they're very crude in form but man do they have an edge on them so there's some really neat little hook blades here. Do some close-ups. So what do you call this one? That one's a double-edged shaping knife. So this is a double-edged shaping knife. It kind of works similar to like a European style pair or a, like a chip carving knife. So they'll use this to cut all the outlines for their work. A lot of native carving is kind of, I guess what you'd call relief carving as well as sculptural like three-dimensional form so they use this to kind of cut their out outlines of the wood and then here's a little hook blade this is used for what like texturing and just getting into the real small nooks and, and uh, just to get your contours properly your curves so i don't like to use a straight edge in the eyes i like to use a curve yeah so all their blades are kind of in this this hook style which is really neat can they got this one's been around for about 35 years, Tom said. You can see how it's worn down from all the sharpenings. It's just got that gentle swoop on it, and then you can see a few other ones here that will have a little bit more curve on the end. And all of these are just for texturing different surfaces, different shapes. And because they're all handmade, they're super cheap. The wood's just laying around, and you can get blade if you have a good saw blade that you can grind pieces out of, you can make your tools super cheap. So we're gonna we're gonna make a chisel coming up in the next come, couple weeks. So we'll take you through the whole process of how to make a chisel like this. It's really pretty straightforward, as you can see. So it's a great way for you guys that are starting out into carving. You can't afford all these fancy forty, fifty dollar chisels. You can just make a whole set of native style chisels, and man, do they work well. Let's take a look at how some of these work. The nice thing about working with cedar is it comes off pretty quick. Them and you can go against the grain with them too. You have a proper angle to use. It 
So he's using the chisel in kind of a scrub style across the skewing across the grain. Technique I'd recommend to anybody if they haven't been carving very long. Oh, the young guys that I was teaching to carve end up driving to the hospital. Just letting the chisel get away from them. Knife, don't grip it tight enough and bounce all the wood and put a chunk of their leg off. And one guy has a slice about that big out of his leg from one of my big curves. <laughs> <laughs> Managed to keep it. Let's hold it back up. Oh man, if you're not pulling the right direction, you don't have control over your chisel. It gets away from you with these super thin blades. They will just bury themselves into your flesh pretty quick. So you got to kind of work up to, to being able to work with this kind of speed and, and pressure. If you don't respect the tool, you will pay. Can you show a little bit of how you go in around the eyes with those knives as well and just the texture it creates and how profile is so much different than a European style gouge where it's hard to get into the little nooks and crannies. But you can see with this hook style knife where you're cutting a, in a different motion and not having a chisel behind, you're not, you're not cutting front to back, you're cutting on the side just allows you to get into the shapes and contours so much easier. It helps you smooth out what you're working on so there's less sanding. If done properly. It'll sand up really super easy now. Do you usually sand stuff smooth or do you like to leave a texture on it? Some I like the texture, some I like to sand very completely. I'm a texture man myself. I always try and leave my gouge marks on there. I've done that on some poles just for aesthetics. It looks really nice on a big pole. When the light hits it the right way, yeah. you just see all that come to life. I love that. As long as your knife light enough, you can go against the grain with this with these knives. A firm, firm grip or just a feather, feather like grip. It's still kind of fading away or are there more and more people getting into native carving? There's a lot more people, they want to get into it, but they want big money right now. Uh, for me, I did it mostly for the love of the art, but then along with it came the payment for my time too. So how long did it take you, how long did it take you to kind of get established and be able to make a living from it? Probably 20 years to make a decent living. Yeah, that seems to be uh, <laughs> pretty normal for whatever craft you set your, yourself to. It's going to take you at least 10 years to kind of master it and then another 10 to get enough work behind you that people recognize and, and value your abilities and pay you what you're worth. So with total poles, it's typically by the foot? Yeah, for a good pair. So for a, you know, someone like yourself, what would you charge per foot on a totem pole? I charge 2,000 a foot, no matter what size now. Two grand a foot. Yeah. So the taller the pole, that can get pretty pricey pretty quick. But you get what you pay for too. Yeah. All right, so that's where I'm gonna cut it off for this week. I stayed and chatted with Tom for a, for a while longer and you know, just getting to, we're just getting to know each other. I just want to say thank you so much, Tom, for letting us into your shop and allowing us to document some of your work and the whole process behind this kind of native carving. I know it's really intriguing to me personally and a lot of other people that are watching this channel. So if you guys are pumped on this video series that we're going to do on how to carve a totem pole and just the whole native style of carving and making tools and stuff like that, please give a huge shout out to Tom in the comment section. Let him know where you're from. So Tom can get an idea of the awesome community that we've got going on here as woodworkers and aspiring craftsmen. 
So that wraps it up. If you've got other comments, stuff you want to see, stuff you want to uh, learn about, let us know in the comment section below so Tom and I can kind of read through that. And, and, and if you guys have any ideas or stuff you'd like to see carved or up close details, that sort of stuff, I'll try my best to document all that as we go through this series of making native uh, carving tools as well as the whole totem pole carving thing. And I'm obviously going to have to try my hand at this a bit once Tom teaches me a little bit about the design process and I think I want to make a mask. I've always wanted to have kind of a native style mask like that owl or you know an eagle mask or long beak or a bear or something awesome like that. I just I love native artwork and to be able to learn from a professional is this is just an awesome opportunity for me and for all of us so I'm super excited about this. That pretty much wraps this week's Free Tip Friday up. I know Friday was yesterday but it's Life's just crazy keeping up with all this shit, okay? Just give me a break, all right? Until next time, guys, Samurai out.